On November 1, 2004, a couple hiking in the Hamastunturi wilderness area of Finland, Miko and Lisa Virtanen, found a damaged Hewlett Packard laptop discarded on a hillside. They took it home with them, where Miko was able to remove the hard drive, hoping to find a clue about the owner so it could be returned. What Miko found on the hard drive was a series of video entries that had been recorded on the laptop's webcam. The final entry was extremely disturbing, and he immediately handed it into police. The following is audio extracted from the video blog entries by detectives investigating this case. 2nd October 2004 Hey guys, welcome to my new vlog for my project on the old histories of Finland. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Emmy Pulkinen, a high school senior living up north in Rovaniemi. Since this is just an intro to my vlog, I'll give you the quick details on what I'm doing. Basically, I chose to focus my year-end research paper on the ancient history and folklore of Finland, all that stuff before Christianity and Swedish rulers came in and tried to erase the old pagan cultures. My goal is to dig up as much info as I can on the ethnic Sami people, old writings, pre-Viking era legends, and myths. Basically anything from those mysterious centuries that we don't have much recorded on. I think it'll be a super fascinating topic to dive into. In a few weeks, I'm headed down to Helsinki to scope out the big libraries and museums there for source material. But in the meantime, I'll be hitting up my local libraries to at least get a head start on the research and pre-writing process. Fair warning, these vid updates probably won't be daily, but I'll try to vlog whenever I make any cool new discoveries or need to vent about the inevitable burnout. Wish me luck, and I'll see you on the next entry. Peace. 18th of October 2004. Emmy here with an update on Project Sammy Heritage, or whatever I'm going to call this vlog series. Spent a few hours today at our local library searching their sadly lacking section on pre-13th century Finland. I did find one interesting book that references myths of the forest people and talks about some ancient Finno-Ugric tribes that inhabited areas near where we now call Lapland. There were brief parts hinting at beliefs around sacred groves, sacrificial rituals, and connections to the Aurora Borealis. Creepy stuff. Unfortunately, the book just cherry-picks passages from older, untranslated sources lost to time. Still, makes me wonder just what sorts of practices and pagan beliefs existed here before all the Christian cultural takeovers. Probably lots of disturbing mysticism and black magic will never recover, to be honest. Anyway, enough darkness for today. I'm off to catch a new Finnish war documentary with my friend Helga, since she has my same weird fascination for bleak historical drama. After that, I can't wait for my trip down to Helsinki next week to really kick this folklore hunt into high gear. Peace. 25th October 2004. What's up everybody? It's Emmy coming to you from the airport Starbucks. I'm feeling really hyped for this epic field trip down to Helsinki. Huge shout out to my girl Essie for loaning me a book that I think has a link to Finland's ancient roots. This dusty old tome may not look like much, but apparently it's full of facts and writings dating back to the Iron Age or some crazy obscure period like that. Judging by the state of it, the book itself looks like it's from the Iron Ages. Hopefully it's the sort of source material I need to start building out my research paper. I was skeptical at first, since it came from the eccentric, musty old man who's always rambling about the old religions at the local library. But Essie said he was super psyched to loan it to someone actually interested in preserving the old Finno-Urgic histories and cultures. Can't wait to start translating the runes and annotating it. Only downside is I've got to return it when I head home and I'm not sure I'll be done by then. But no point stressing over that just yet. Time to board my flight and prepare to hit those Helsinki libraries hard. I'll be going full Lara Croft mode. Gotta secure that A+. Catch you soon. Peace. 26th of October 2004. Emmy here. It's 2.30am. Um, I've kind of been putting off making this video because, well, some strange stuff has been happening. Let me start at the beginning. So I finally cracked open that musty book Essie borrowed from the old man. Let me tell you, this thing is beyond creepy. 
At first I was excited to see the yellow parchment pages were full of hand-drawn runes and writing in a language I didn't recognize. I figured it would be research gold, but after leafing through some of the pages, I started getting this bizarre, uneasy vibe like someone was standing over me in that darkened corner of the city library. There was no one, of course, just my overactive imagination, and I started imagining that the etchings and the thick parchment could have been made in blood. I told myself to stop being stupid and began to work on researching the symbols. Within half an hour I had the worst headache of my life, and I had to close the book and pack up for the afternoon. Back in my cheap hotel room, I laid down, and I ended up sleeping until 2 a.m. in the morning. I had the strangest, I, I wouldn't call them nightmares, but perhaps something similar to fever dreams. Now that I'm awake, I can't remember them, but that uneasy feeling hasn't left me. I'm determined to get back into the old book first thing in the morning, though. 27th of October, 2004. Hey, guys. I'm back home in Rovaniemi. There's been some uh, developments on the research front. And by developments, I mean a descent into total obsession with a stupid book. I've been translating the rooms and researching every waking hour, pushing my mind to its limits. I think they may be dealing with some wild supernatural fables rather than history here. I swear, this bizarre text seems to be manifesting dark powers. Just studying the words and scrolls ambitious torturous headaches and nausea. With frequent breaks, I've managed to translate a few passages that explain that northern Finland was once under the thrall of an ancient entity that was worshipped by the ancient Kiyukunan people. I was proceeding well, but just before midday, I swear, the text on the pages began to shift before my eyes, like black tendrils oozing across the parchment. I slammed it shut and went out for some fresh air. I was frightened, but I couldn't leave it more than an hour. Something draws me back to it. I could barely tear myself away from it, but I refuse to pick it up again now until I get a good night's sleep. I wish my parents were back from their American tour. 28th of October, 2004. This is it. The book has revealed something about a portal concealed somewhere in the Hamastunturi Fells. It's very specific and mentions something called the Needle. According to what I've deciphered across these pages, the entire region stands as a tattered veil between our world and other dimensions, and that, at the side of the Needle, there is a portal first opened by the Kukainan peoples. In their madness through sacrificial rituals at the Needle, they hope to wake a slumbering demon from across the veil and bring him into our world. Of course, it's superstitious bullshit, but if I can find this needle, which I assume is a strange rock formation or an obelisk, it will be astounding and help me make my paper amazing, maybe even make this blog famous. Anyway, tomorrow morning, early, I'm driving there. I'll check in with you tomorrow evening. 29th of October, 2004, 1.14 p.m. Hi guys, well, it's afternoon. I didn't leave as early as I wanted, but here I am. I've set up my camp, but I'm tired after my long drive, so I'm going to nap for 30 minutes or so before I make a start. I'll check in later. 29th of October, 2004, 4.32 p.m. Oh my gosh, I slept for three hours. Stupid. I'm glad I set my tent up first. I'm going to hike now, but I won't be able to go as far as I was hoping. It'll be dark in less than two hours, and it's cold, but at least there's no sign of rain. I'm taking my laptop, so I'll check in if I come across anything interesting. Otherwise, I'll explore further in the morning. Peace. 29th. I'm lost, but that's not all. There's someone or something up here. It started out as a feeling, like I was being watched. It creeped me up. So I decided to make my way back to camp while there was still a little daylight. <laughs> it got dark so quickly and I lost my bearings. While I was trying to look for a familiar landmark, I saw its silhouette on a ridge. It was the shape of a person. I froze where I stood and pulled out my flashlight. And when I switched it on and aimed it at the ridge, there was nothing. Just musk-covered and weathered rocks. And then my flashlight blooded and died. When my eyes adjusted to the bad light, the silhouette was there again. And that was when I heard his unearthly screech. I turned and ran. It only stopped when I tripped. 
I'm bleeding from a blow to the forehead, and I'm too exhausted to run anymore, even though every fiber of my body is screaming for me to get the hell out of here. I don't know. I don't... If I don't get out of this, and you find my laptop, please pass it on to the... Oh my god, what's that? No! On October 31st, 2004, two days after the timestamp of the last recorded entry in Emmy Pulkinen's video blog, a 200-man search team uncovered the students' deserted campsite and vehicle. The site, situated half a kilometer from the initial discovery place of her laptop, appeared untouched. The team executed an outward spiral search, meticulously combing the vicinity surrounding the laptop's resting place. Ten meters to the north, bloodstains were found, and later forensically matched to Emmy's DNA. She was unable to be located. Despite exhaustive efforts, no additional evidence of her whereabouts was uncovered. The search operation was terminated after four days, and after 12 months with no further leads or suspects, authorities closed the case and declared Emmy Pulkin and missing, and presumed dead. For more creepy stories like this, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified. If you enjoy full-length audiobooks, be sure to check out Scott's audiobook channel. You'll find links in the description.